So Nasrallah's body has been found uh, in the bunker uh, where he died. Uh, the good news, the good news is uh, for for the uh, for the uh, uh, Shiites uh, is that the body has been found intact. Um, the good news, from my perspective, is Nasrallah did not die from the collapse of the bunker on top of him. That would have been too fast and quick of a death for a monster like Nasrallah. Nasrallah died slowly. He died from the gases uh, emitted into the room from the explosion. Um, he, again, the, he, he was in some crevice in the bunker that did not collapse on him. Uh, and uh, so he died a nice, slow, agonizing death where he got to think about, I guess, the virgins waiting for him to be heaven or fear that maybe God would actually put him in hell or maybe there is no God or just the fact that those Israelis got him. They got him. And, and, and even though he didn't have a beeper and, and no walkie-talkies or anything else, he got to die slowly. So, uh, you know, so that's, so the body's been discovered. There will be a funeral tomorrow in Beirut. This will be massive. Although I have a feeling that uh, the leadership, whatever's left of Hezbollah leadership, not much, uh, not many people are left. Hezbollah leadership will, might be absent uh, uh, from the event, uh, fear of maybe a sniper attack or who knows what. Uh, it's also, so the funeral will be held tomorrow. There's also an expectation that uh, Hezbollah will announce tomorrow who the heir to Nasrallah uh, is. Uh, there seems to be some conflict within the organization in terms of who that should be and what direction the organization should take and, where, for example, whether they should attempt to continue the current war with Israel right now. Uh, the leading candidate for the replacement of uh, Nasrallah is, uh, I think, his nephew, uh, Saif Adin, who is also married to the daughter of Soleimani. You remember Soleimani, the guy that uh, the, the Iranians that, uh, that uh, Trump uh, had assassinated? Uh, so uh, he, he has good uh, relations with the Iranians, which, and he spent a lot of time in Iran. He studied in Homs. Homs is the kind of spiritual home of Shiite Islam. Uh, and, and where all the, all the Iranian clerics, all the Shiite clerics get trained. Uh, so uh, uh, it, 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 it is likely that this guy will be the next leader of Hezbollah. He has been with the organization over 30 years. He's, about, he's, he's in his, um, uh, I, I think he's in his uh, 60s. No, he's in his 50s. I think he's in his 50s. Uh, he's been kind of been. Uh, uh, I was I was going to say Bin Laden because they're all the same monsters, but he's been Nasrallah's right hand man for decades now. He knows him again, family uh, relations, and uh, he's been part of this uh, for for a very long time. He's also, funnily enough, or not, he looks a lot like Nasrallah. He sounds a lot like Nasrallah, although he doesn't have that. Uh, you know, whatever it is that Nasrallah had, uh, that kind of, uh, which they claim is, is some kind of, you know, uh, a, a, a certain um, charisma. He, he doesn't have that, and he's not a great orator uh, like they claim Nasrallah was. So um, that is probably going to be uh, the new head. Uh, Israel, uh, over the last 48 hours, or really since, since the bombing of Nasrallah's bunker and the killing of Nasrallah, uh, they have been. They haven't stopped. Amazingly, they have been bombing ruthlessly throughout uh, South Lebanon, the Baka Valley, North Lebanon, um, and in that neighborhood in um, uh, in Beirut, the neighborhood where the Shiites dominate. By the way, I looked at a graph. I saw I saw this little graph that showed that this neighborhood, where basically Hezbollah runs everything, this neighborhood in 1975 was a 50 percent Christian neighborhood, there were basically no Shiites there. Sunnis, Christians, primarily Christians of various denominations, no Shiites there, and, and now it's 100% Shiite, dominated by uh, Hezbollah. Anyway, they've been attacking there. They've killed a number of additional 
uh, people in the leadership uh, of, uh, of Hezbollah. So they're making the decision about who should replace Nasrallah fairly easy because they're basically killing all the candidates, you know, except maybe the one who's, uh, who's, uh, left, uh, who's left over. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, so Israel continued to attack all of Lebanon uh, and, and uh, destroying infrastructure, destroying caches of weapon systems. Uh, destroying the capability to launch the weapons because they're destroying launches. Uh, you know, Nasrallah died, and the response has been pretty muted. I mean, nobody could have believed that this would indeed be the case. But, you know, they, 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 everybody expected if Nasrallah was ever taken out, thousands, tens of thousands of rockets would be launched against Israel. It happening. Barrage here, barrage there, many of them falling in, in completely uninhabited areas as if they've lost their, capa their capability of, of targeting them. That could be because the people who actually know what they were doing are all being killed. Uh, it, it could be that Israel's destroyed their smarter bombs. Uh, anyway, just nothing. Uh, no Israeli has died since Nasrallah's death. I don't think anybody's, maybe somebody's been injured, but nobody knows really died since the Nasrallah's death, which is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Completely unexpected. No, nobody saw this coming. I mean, Hezbollah was this mighty force that Israel was doomed to, to, to even try to deal with. And it's just fizzled away. Uh, so um, Israel continues to attack Lebanon, Syria, uh, uh, Hezbollah targets. Uh, there's rumors about 12 hours ago, there were rumors of a Israeli, uh, the beginning of an Israeli ground invasion into southern Lebanon or incursion into southern Lebanon. I, I don't know that that's happened. It, you know, it's, it's gone silent. So this is not something that uh, could go, you know, if they're, if they're invading, they're invading everybody in the world would know. So I have a sense that this is, uh, that that was maybe a special op or something like that, but not a full scale, scale um, uh, entry into South Lebanon. Whether that's justified, whether that's needed or not, we can talk about in the in a little while. But but certainly that does not seem uh, to have happened yet. Does not seem to happening. Um, over the last uh, forty eight hours, uh, the Houthis have launched. Actually, even before that, while I was in Israel. Just before I arrived in Israel, the Houthis launched a missile towards Tel Aviv. They've launched a few others since then. Um, and uh, it, so Israel responded today, 1,800 kilometers away from Israel. They responded uh, with uh, airplanes flying there, uh, both fighter, uh, fighter planes and bombers, and refueling airplanes, so uh, a, a massive operation, 1,800 kilometers away uh, from Israel's base, so that's over 1,000 miles. Uh, Israel basically uh, destroyed uh, another of the uh, kind of oil facilities oil, uh, in the port uh, that the Houthis control, and they destroyed a, uh, a couple of power stations um, in, uh, uh, in uh, Yemen. I, I don't know how much this is going to slow down the Houthis. Uh, a lot more needs to be done in order to destroy their capabilities. It's hard to believe that Israel could do it. Alone, I mean, they probably could, but it would be very expensive and very time-consuming and very effort-consuming. Whereas the United States could do it in hours, and and crush the Houthis and 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 destroy them. Uh, this operation against the Houthis that Israel engaged in was coordinated with the U.S. The U.S. was aware of it. Did give it a thumbs up. Why it didn't participate, given that it's U.S. trade, it's the U.S. fleet that's bogged down over there. It's U.S. trade that is being destroyed. It's European trade. Why? NATO uh, isn't down there eviscerating the Houthis. Only God knows. No, I mean, this is exactly the sign. I Israel here is leading the West away from its dedication to compromise and appeasement, and the, and, and the West is resisting that. So Israel's showing the way, and the West is going, ah, well, we're not quite ready. We, no, we want to appease some more. We want to de-escalate. We're afraid. We, no, I mean, no, we're not, we, we can't do it. So um, Israel's attacking the Houthis, which, which the West should have done months and months ago. 
Um, and and the, uh, the U.S., which has zillions of assets right near the Houthis, right there, um, is just sitting back. And, and I guess, you know, the, the, the Israelis let them know primarily because the U.S. is active in that region, flying around. They don't want to encounter dozens of Israeli planes suddenly coming out of them unexpectedly. So they had to tell them. But it's just, it's just truly unbelievable. All right. I, as part of this, you know, just mentality of weakness, mentality of appeasement, mentality of, of, of no self-esteem, no assertion, no, uh, you know, actually enforcing right, uh, America's right to self-defense, which we'll talk about again some more. Biden and Harris both responded to the killing of, uh, of uh, Nasrallah. They both had, you know, good things to say in the sense that Nasrallah has a lot of American blood on his hands, and uh, this is an act of justice, and so on. But then both of them ended the commentary with something like, and now all we need is a ceasefire so this doesn't escalate. You want to just rip your hair out with frustration that, that a, a political class still does not understand what's going on here, and what's at play, and what's involved, and how... What you need is escalation. What you need is victory. What you need is to finish a war started in 1979. What you need is to complete it. And what you need is to help Israel finish it rather than sitting on the sidelines. Yeah, that was good. You know, it's an act of justice. They killed Israel. Good. Thumbs up. Now, please, cease fire. We got to stop because we might, we might, we might upset the Iranians. And who the F cares if you upset the Iranians? Who cares? Isn't the whole point upsetting the Iranians, maybe to the point of being victorious over them? All right, anyway, Yeri um, says the sirens over Haifa right now. Uh, it is, uh, what is it? It's 7 p.m. in Haifa right now. So the sirens, so yeah, they're going to be sirens. They're going to launch attacks. Um, they're going to launch their missiles. They haven't been effective so far. There's no reason to believe they are going to be. But I have a feeling Yayu is going to keep us updated uh, to the extent that they are. So Biden and Harris, while at least not saying uh, uh, mourning and, and, and presenting their condolences for the killing of, uh, of, uh, of Nasrallah, at least they're saying good, good riddance, it's an act of justice. Good for them for saying that. Um, then they go on and, and this compromise.